We are officially in cozy season where the sun sleeps in, the fuzzy socks are out, and it's all about cozy meals and cozy sweaters and cozy vibes. I love slow mornings and the quiet hours before the world wakes up where it's just me and a warm blanket and my book of the moment. If you didn't know, I have officially graduated university and I'm currently back at my parents' house. Honestly, this was not the plan. I used to think that what I wanted when I grew up was to leave my hometown and be independent and fall in love and make a new life for myself in the world. When I thought about where I'd be on a Monday at age 23, I definitely wouldn't have pictured it would be unemployed and single reading a book on my parents' couch at 5 a.m. But you know, that's life. And if you'd asked me even a couple months ago, I may have felt slightly ashamed that I wasn't, I don't know, starting my own business yet or traveling the world or madly in love with my soulmate and feeling my days with productive work and all that stuff. I know a lot of people are very career focused and always grinding and hustling, driven to succeed even if it costs them their soul. I've personally been there and I've been working very hard to gain back my soul ever since. In this season of my life, I'm not in a hurry to do all that adulting and I feel very fortunate it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. I love that I can spend more time with my family and that I'm so content with my own company and that I've found so many things that fulfill me beyond work and school and romantic relationships. And what a privilege that is. I've given myself full permission to just go with the flow or run with it, actually. Oh, how running has changed my life. I've been having way too much fun training for this marathon. I love how it gives my day structure, how it's tested my patience and mental resilience and forced me to slow down, and how I never fail to stumble across something that makes me feel grateful for being alive. Underneath the rainbow. I feel like a free spirit when I run, like a majestic gazelle ungracefully galloping through the suburbs. This may be super unrelatable and annoying of me to say because everyone makes running sound like a chore, but I go to bed excited to wake up and run, and there are times I I don't even want the run to end. If you can't tell, I don't exactly have a super exciting life. My runs and my meals and my books are the happiest parts of my day. And I'm not mad about it because that just means I have little pockets of happy to look forward to every day. Right now, a main source of happiness are my cozy fall breakfasts. These apple cinnamon oats are a staple in my fall breakfast rotation. And I suppose I could eat them at any point in the year, but warm cinnamon apples in the fall just hits different. With the crunchy toasted pecans and the creamy texture of the oats, you know, taking some time out of my morning to make myself a nice tasty breakfast that nourishes my body and my soul is my favorite form of self-care. I really do see running as a form of self-care too. It's crazy how changing your mindset can change the whole run. I never put any pressure on myself to run at a certain pace. I kind of just allow my energy levels, my effort to guide the run. I never have to run. It's more like a gift I get to give to myself every morning. It's a period of time I get to disconnect from everything and everyone and connect with the things that really matter. My breath, my body, and the gift that is life and nature. I feel light and free and I always know I'm gonna feel so proud of myself afterwards. It's kind of like how I don't dread eating pancakes or reading a book or going to bed. Running is another way I take care of myself. If one day I start to dread running, I'll know it's time to reevaluate my mindset and my why. At the end of the day, running should be fun. It's a hobby. It's something that should be adding joy and health and energy and peace into my life, not taking those things away. Very low maintenance. <laughs> I think the only reason my mom started her vegetable garden in the first place was to grow chives to make chive pockets, or as we call them, jiu Most Chinese families have their own version of these pockets of deliciousness. They're made with some combo of chives, eggs, meat, and vermicelli. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some are big, some are small, some are round, and some are half moon shaped. But you can always tell they're made with love. While they're not my favorite Chinese dish, I always eat a couple to show mother sense of support. Good job, huh? Do you like the shape? The jiu I agree. Thanks, ma. You worked so hard. I don't know why, for the past two months, I've been eating this every night. I'm obsessed. No. Okay, but every kid coming to Harvard is inevitable. There's a few from every genre and subgenre. Come on, come on, come on let's do it all.
A running question I get a lot is if I ever stop to walk when I run. Personally, I don't really stop unless it's to get water or enjoy a really pretty view or if I'm doing a speed run and I stop to revive myself after each interval. But that doesn't mean walking during your run is a bad thing or means it doesn't count as a run. It's a very normal and effective strategy for beginner runners, runners coming back from an injury, or sometimes your body's just not in the running mood or your stomach is feeling off or you just start to feel a weird pain. You know your body best. Stopping to get your heart rate down or to tie your shoe or to have a little snack won't take away any of your fitness and doesn't make you any less of a runner. I'm able to not stop now because I've built up my fitness and I've learned to run at a slow enough pace where it's easy to breathe and talk. And yes, some speed walkers may be going faster than me, but that's okay. Oh my God, it is so cold. I can't feel my fingers. When I used to run, I always believed I had to be profusely sweating and pushing myself to the limit for it to count as a run. And back then I couldn't make it past three or four kilometers without feeling like death. So I've been practicing the art of slowing down in my runs and in my life. And it's definitely the reason why I have enough energy to keep going. As a newer runner, the possibility of getting injured freaks me out. So I've been quite deliberate with my strength training because I swear people are getting injured left, right, and center. Injury does come with the territory. So obviously I'm gonna be doing whatever I can to help prevent it. So I strengthen my leg muscles. I don't overtrain. I have slowly and gradually built up my running distances. I always warm up and I sleep. Sleep is so slept on. It's so important for recovery and improving fitness and health in general. And of course, eating enough food and enough protein. The training plan this week has me running around 80 kilometers. So I'm extra hungry and proper nutrition is extra important. These are the best things ever. But I've never been the type of person to eat just to satisfy my hunger. I Googled it and I only have around 60,000 meals left in my life. And I kind of want each and every one of those to be somewhat delicious. I do enjoy cooking, but sometimes Sometimes we get busy or I just feel uninspired or don't want to move, but still need to eat so I don't get hangry. Shredded chicken rosé with cauliflower, cava tapi, and spicy garlic broccoli. That one sounds really good. So today for lunch, I'm eating a factor meal. These are so great. They're fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. And you don't even have to think about meal prepping or cooking or cleaning up. This week I got the protein plus option. Like this meal has over 40 grams of protein. 40. Isn't that crazy? It's so cheesy. They also have other options like chef special or keto, vegan, and veggie. And they also have gourmet meals with premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, broccolini, and truffle butter. If you didn't know, I've been a loyal HelloFresh customer for over like three years because honestly, I think their meals are just delicious and factor meals are even more quick and simple. So if you want to try it out, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 50LINDA to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first factor box. Mm. That's code 50LINDA at factor75.com to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first box. If you haven't noticed, on a scale, of zero to introvert. I'm like an ultra introvert. My routine is pretty much the same every day and I avoid human interaction whenever I can and I love it. Like I've created a routine that protects my energy and doesn't trigger my anxiety and allows me to spend time doing what matters most to me and I feel very grounded. At least most days I feel this way. For years I've always had this belief that if I'm not overworking myself and on the cusp of burnout I'm not doing enough. I'm not meeting my potential you know. And I read something the other day that was like in the past a sign of success used to be more free time and being able to do less every day. Now we measure success by how much more we are doing. For example, my brain keeps saying to me, I can't believe the only thing you're doing is training for a marathon. First of all, what? As if training for a marathon is not challenging or physically taxing enough. Second of all, how dare I? There's nothing only about running 42 kilometers or five kilometers or running at all. There's nothing only about trying your best or having the courage to start something new. <laughs> Third of all, like, that's not even true. That's not the only thing I'm doing. Yes, I'm training, but I'm also trying to take care of my mental health, trying to be a kinder person. I'm trying to eat enough food and be creative and protect my peace. I'm a girl, I'm in my 20s, and none of that is easy. I've been so proud of myself on my running journey, and I've been especially proud of the fact that I haven't been comparing myself to other runners, but I swear social media and comparison are like the devils in disguise. I know it's slightly ironic that someone whose entire livelihood depends on social media is saying this, but I'm dead serious. If I didn't use social media for work, I wouldn't use social media at all. I'm quite selective about the people I follow, and even then, more than half of them are on mute. I like to think that if you don't have my number, you cannot disturb me. I'm very protective of my peace, and social media is really good at stealing feeling disturbing and obliterating that piece. I think the world would be a better place if we all used it less. There would be less self-doubt, self-criticism, jealousy, insecurity over consumption, and just better
better mental health. That's not to say there aren't some online communities that are spreading awareness on really important topics and help people feel less alone, but in my opinion, overall, it's pretty toxic. I don't know, one minute I'll be so proud of myself for running, and the next my entire feed is filled with other humans' marathon training, but they're running faster and eating cleaner and wearing way cuter outfits, and they're also a part-time lawyer and dog rescuer and mom of four and Forbes 30 under 30 -er and model. Part of me, of course, is happy for them and inspired by them, and another part is disappointed in myself for not being them. And I know a huge part of it is working on my own insecurities and self-esteem and practicing gratitude. And I know we all have different priorities and capacities and strengths, and we're all on such different journeys. And I know some people probably look at my life and compare, and I know it can be true that while they may be doing 500 more things than me, I can still be proud of myself for doing that one thing I worked really hard on. Just because my heart is easy for someone else doesn't make my hard thing less hard for me. And just because my work looks different doesn't mean I'm not working. But to go from knowing something to believing something takes time. Social media is really good at distorting what we consider to be normal. When we see everyone happy online, we think our sadness and frustration is abnormal, but it's not. We see bodies and faces that are being praised, and we forget the purpose of our bodies is so much more than what they look like. We see relationship and friendship highlights, and we start feeling insecure about our own. We see other people with so much stuff we don't have, and we forget to appreciate all the stuff we already do have. We see a bunch of home-cooked aesthetic meal recipes and feel bad about our own thrown-together bowl of leftovers or that it's our third day ordering Uber Eats because we just don't have the energy. The algorithm can make it seem like the whole world is better, happier, faster, healthier than us. Or maybe if we just looked and lived more like them and owned the things they owned, we would finally feel enough. I think some of it is okay. Uh, you only see what they want you to see. Every person you see literally set up a camera, then spent hours editing their content to create a perfect 10 second portrayal of their lives. I promise you, they feel miserable and insecure and lost sometimes too. They're comparing themselves to someone else too. And I think I'm just trying to remind you that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. At the end of the day, we're all just human. So here's a little reality check. I accidentally put quadruple the amount of baking soda needed and almost poisoned my mom and failed so miserably at cooking my broccoli. But now I know to never eyeball my baking soda again and that broccoli tastes gross if you overcook it. The broccoli dissolves. And I've learned that if all else fails, at least I can make this pumpkin streusel bread to cheer myself up. See, if we don't let ourselves make mistakes, how will we ever become better bakers and broccoli cookers? The video is 20 minutes long, but it was five hours of footage before. So you're seeing less than 1% of my life and the other 99% of the time I'm editing or sleeping or overthinking. Redemption. Yes. I know the food looks yummy, but we spend more time cleaning it up. I get distracted when I read and end up scrolling for an hour by accident. I am messy. My mom cleans up after me. I never think anything I post is ever good enough. A lot of the time, I feel like I don't deserve this life and I feel guilty for having it. I feel like I don't do enough. I'm not grateful enough. I'm not nice enough. Mommy, I did it. Oh. It doesn't suck. This one doesn't poison you. I <laughs> fight with my mom. I have a bad temper, especially when I'm hungry. I'm definitely a work in progress. Mm. I wonder if I'm a terrible person constantly and I worry about whether anyone will ever love me. It's like the perfect texture. I needed this win. I was feeling like a loser. I had to prove to myself. This is really excellent. I worry about the day when I will finally say the wrong thing or people will get to know who I really am and leave me or when I become irrelevant and this is all gonna be over. Even though I know I'll be fine and I'll figure it out, I still worry and then I get angry at myself for worrying because I'm trying to live in the moment. Give yourself grace, guys. Did you know in reality only 10 to 15 percent of the world runs regularly. 8% can complete a 5k, 5% can run a 10k, 2% of the world complete a half marathon, and 0.5 to 1% complete a full marathon. If you are trying your best to do healthy things for your body and mind, trying your best to be a good person, trying your best to get through the day, trying your best to live authentically, and trying your best to create moments of joy for yourself, if you're trying your best, you are trying hard enough, you are doing enough, you are good enough. Can I just lie here? All day, please. For some reason, Canada decided to be three degrees this morning. Three. So I'm layered up, sports bra, purple long sleeve, and then I have white athletic sweater thing, and then I have down jacket. This might be a little too aggressive, but I literally fear the cold. On a positive note, these bananas are so perfect right now. 
I love bad runs. Obviously not during it, but it's usually on the bad runs where I learn and grow the most as a runner. Bad runs are like the runs where I have a couple bathroom emergencies or cramps the whole time because I've eaten too close to the time of my run or something my stomach did not like, or I ran too fast and hit a wall or without enough fuel or stretching or water, or sometimes it's a run where I did everything right and I just feel weak. But after those runs, I always know a little bit more about my body than I did before and that's a win. What running has taught me is that progress is not only about running longer and further and more perfectly. Perfection didn't get you here. It was the fact that you kept running, even though it wasn't perfect. Progress is accepting that sometimes we can't do the run we want, so we do the run we can instead. Bad runs lead to better runs. I feel so lucky to have runs that are good enough to know what a hard one feels like. And I feel so lucky to experience a bad run so I can, you know, fully appreciate the good ones. Why does it taste like apple crisp? That is so good. I could eat this for dessert. Gilmore Girls season two. It's just season, the best season in my opinion. Sometimes I can't believe after all these years, I'm still filming myself eat. Roasted garlic chicken or cranberry apple pork chop. And I'm absolutely so grateful I get to do this for a living. Don't get me wrong. Thank you for giving me this incredibly cool life. But sometimes I feel like I'm stuck. Like I'm not challenging myself enough or growing enough. I just graduated from business school. So everyone in my circle has moved to a big city and they're working for big companies while my friends who do social media are starting their own brands and making friends all like over that. the world. And I'm, well, in the same place I've always been. Oh my god. I watched a video the other day that said, you are not a Fortune 500 company. You don't have to show increasing profits and have impressive quarterly reports. You don't always have to be achieving. You don't have to earn your right to be here. You just get to be here. Now this Sunday, I have the longest run of my training plan. That's pretty insane for me to comprehend. I'm pretty sure most marathon training plans have the longest run around 32 to 35 kilometers or up to three hours. Depends on the runner and the plan. Your long runs are supposed to be a chance for you to experiment with fuel and practice your fueling strategy. And ideally you want to get in like 60 to 90 grams of carbs per hour. I'm more at like 30 because at the end of my run, I'm like a little nauseous and grossed out by the thought of ingesting another gel, but I've been improving. Currently I take one every 40 minutes or so, but my my goal is to get down to 30 minutes so I can feel stronger and have more stable energy levels. But coming from someone who used to use exercise and running as a form of punishment and as a way to lose weight and lose fat and get rid of the guilt I had from eating, the fact that I'm now trying to eat more to gain more energy and run with more joy and improve my fitness and to support my body, it's pretty mind-boggling how much we've grown. <laughs> when every day kind of looks similar, it's easy to believe we're not growing or that all our effort is for nothing. Progress happens so slowly, but it is happening. I was thinking about this before I fell asleep last night. Mommy, do you want one? Instead of measuring progress by how much more money we make or faster we run or how our bodies have changed, growth is when someone tells you you look happier lately. When you realize you didn't stress about food when you went out to eat with your friends or when you skipped a workout. Growth is when you eat breakfast, even when everyone else skips it. When you realize you are actually giving yourself grace in situations you would have been angry with yourself before. You are resting without guilt. Calorie labels don't trigger you anymore. When you stop feeling an urgency to have it all figured out now. And growth is accepting you are allowed to have opposing feelings and thoughts. You can feel grounded and stuck. You can hate and love your job. You can be grateful and overwhelmed. You can love salad and cookies. You can wish them well, but also not want them in your life anymore. You can be strong and super duper sensitive. Growth is deciding you don't have to make sense to everyone. Growth is looking up how to run faster instead of how to lose belly fat. Looking up what foods to eat before a marathon instead of the number of calories in a banana. It's looking up top 10 restaurants in the city instead of how to get abs in 10 days. I realize that growth is less about becoming someone new and more about shedding who I'm not. You are not behind, you are right on time. Grow exactly the way you are, especially if it's slowly. Life is better when it's savored. Like, why would we want to rush all of this away? First blueberry bagel ever. Oh, 
tastes like a blueberry muffin. Natural chia energy gel, three blueberry, four strawberry, three raspberry. Oh, there's caffeine in it. Honey stinger, fruit smoothie, it's like eating candy on your run. Pomegranate passion fruit, a cliff block. I think they're also gummies. They feel like gummies. Raspberry lemonade because it sounds delicious. A salt caramel goo. A birthday cake goo. I'm so curious to see what this tastes like. Feel so rich. Haul done. I have won the lottery with you guys. Thank you for all of the support throughout my running journey. Every comment cheering me on and telling me how you're so happy for me and how you believe in me and that you're proud of me means so much to me. When you spend so much time doing something hard, eventually it becomes easier and we stop recognizing how difficult it is and just how strong we are. We forget how hard we work to get here. And at times it seems like we're only proud when we do something big and special and very difficult. It's like the words, I'm proud of you are being saved for specific moments. Like running a marathon, getting into medical school, graduating from college. But you know what else is also big and special and difficult? Getting through the day even though you are tired and sad and emotionally drained. Making time to move your body. Eating something instead of nothing. Showing yourself grace even though you feel like you don't deserve it. Trusting the process even though it's taking a lot longer than you expected. Doing less work so you can feel more whole. Admitting you are not okay. You know what's difficult? Learning how to be you without them for quitting because you deserve more than a life where you have to survive it. Running a marathon is hard, but we do hard things every day. And you deserve to be told, I believe in you and I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you for all the effort you put into that project or exam or competition or job interview or relationship or race, no matter the outcome. I'm proud of you for figuring it out, how to set up that bookshelf, how to pay your taxes, that you deserve more. I'm proud of you for resting. Even when the whole world seems to celebrate overworking, you are so brave for that. I'm so proud of you for doing that hard thing, even if it's easy for everyone else. I'm proud of you for finally starting that hobby, for going on that first run. Guys, that felt so good. I felt so strong towards the end. It's just so rewarding to see all of this training and running and patience paying off. I'm proud of you for breaking free from what was expected of you, instead writing your own story. I'm proud of you for all of the silent battles you fought and won on your own, for choosing yourself even if you were unsure if you were the right choice. I'm so proud of you for all of the hard things you do. Like, are you kidding me? Do you see how strong you are? And I know you don't hear it enough, but you're hearing it now. I'm so proud of you. I'm getting older too. I think I'm not I'm not sure. Cheers. When I was a freshman in college, I thought life was about having a respectable job. So I could buy expensive clothes and nice cars and be independent. And that life was about having a perfect body and admirable lifestyle so that people would want to be my friend and would love me. This, my life right now, was not the plan. I have a job that's aspired by some, but looked down upon by many, but I believe has done some good. I wear the same three shirts on repeat by choice. I sold my car. 
I live at home, and I think the only person who really loves me for me is my mom. And in my opinion, I have something so much better than the plan because I don't know if I would have ever realized that the real luxuries in life are the slow mornings with the cozy blanket and a good book, calm and boring days, a good night's sleep, peace of mind, having the freedom to choose, a fridge full of food, being present, being healthy, galloping through the suburbs, and having people you love and people who love you back. And peanut butter, of course.